And this stuff all works as long as the audience can find some logic for it. It's, you know, that's why I wanted to do that, just that little transition from the from the ghost at the top of the stairs to just for a moment the beast. Ghost stories usually avoid seeing ghosts. And when they do see ghosts, they're three-dimensional and they're real people. I thought, well, this is a, a real golden opportunity to do a spirit coming down the stairs for the first time. But we shouldn't see his face, though. We shouldn't no, no, see his face. I know. Just the feeling of the, of the body and the arms Still coming up. Yeah. And it's, it's as if he's going to, this thing is growing out of her and it's getting larger and larger and the shoulders are almost going up to the ceiling just when you begin to see the fingers it goes whoosh, breaks up like blowing a smoke ring apart in the air and then goes shooting up into the area by location in your usual ghost stories you have a haunted mansion uh, uh, creaking doors uh, strange sounds that kind of thing but we wanted our setting to be very normal and Stephen then set the story in a very normal, everyday situation. This sort of based the lifestyle on a lifestyle I'm familiar with, growing up in suburban Phoenix, Arizona, in tracked homes uh, with cul-de-sacs and two-car garages, and this suburban lifestyle breeds a certain kind of individual. Steve Freeland was a, is a real estate salesman, and uh, his wife, Diane, uh, and uh, the kids, uh, Dana and, and Robbie and uh, Carol Ann, you know, that normal kind of family, that family existence, the day in, day out, get ready for school, come home, the Dana's dating, you know. And then the amazing thing is, is what comes into their lives. It's total disbelief because you can't see it, you can't feel it, you can't touch it. All you, you know, it's one of those. What do you say? Uh, it's so hard to get your hands onto, you know, and it drives you insane. Right. It's definitely like better that. than one of the. Oh yeah. Oh no no no. Out the it, wall. it should be right from the heart of this beast, yeah. right out to grab him. This is great because it's almost a side angle. You see it real well in this yeah. last shot. Okay. The other thing is on this arc light and coming up through the throat. Yeah, the strep throat light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's real real dark. The sinister tendril coming out of nowhere. I think you'll see it real well against the right mouth and real well against the pink walls. The special effects are all being done by industrial light and magic. The operation that George Lucas owns and finances up in Northern California. We're blazing all sorts of new trails. The chute is folded down right the other ground. Right here. Yeah, really good. The miracle of Poltergeist is the film was finished to have schedule, being as complicated as it was. It was hard to make because it was a special effect in every sequence. Not just an optical effect, but a practical, mechanical effect. You look at the set and you say, oh, it's a typical suburban household. Why don't you just go out to Simi Valley and shoot the interiors as well as the exteriors? Based on the uh, number of effects, you'll see why we had to go to Hollywood and shoot the old-fashioned way. We had lots of shots involving complicated setups for stunts and effects. And you just can't go into somebody's living room and tear out the ceiling and tear out the floor to accommodate them. How's this for the luck, boys? Because they can't lean in. Okay, let's do. Okay, let's roll all the cameras. Woo! Real nice, all right? And anyway, he'll be uh, we'll be popping goo yeah. after you start getting a major piece of face off. Right. Uh, we'll, we'll start with a little trickle when you when you rip this off. One guy will syringe that in okay. and get into that portion. Now you're going to find right. once the stuff is mm -hmm. heated, it's mm -hmm. very tender, and the flesh is going to roll and oh, melt good. under your hand. Good, that's the idea. Oh, great. It takes out everything in pieces. Plus, plus it'll be melted, and the surface will go like gummy, horrible. It's it's disgusting. It's disgusting. Yeah. But there was a lot of special effects, and there was. You know, we had the tree thing, we had the rain, we had the wind, we had the, this whole thing with the, uh, the presence in the house, in the closet, uh, the lights, constant lights. 
from a lighting standpoint, the most difficult scene became the sequence in the famous or infamous closet, the closet where everything goes into and comes out of, the closet with the spectral light. There were so many lighting effects, strobes and Las Vegas spots and fish tanks of water to give a different kind of diffusion to the beams coming out and four large wind machines and minutia and smoke. It was just to coordinate all that for a simple effect. We just didn't want a light, but we wanted the light to live, to really breathe and to exude a kind of a personality. Probably could. I'd rather go under the whole curtain if it's free. But it's, uh, the curtain is below the water. It's, it's uh, below the water line. But will that give too much friction? I'm not sure, friction. Man, I'm not sure about that. We'll find out. All right, let's try it. You're wet. You know, you're constantly wet, coming to work wet. Hell, I might as well just not have, you know, gone in the shower and just left my clothes on. Driven to work. Many days it seemed like they did. Drive the rain. Okay. Roll it down. Every fourth person you know has had an experience of some sort with a poltergeist or a ghost. You just have to ask around, you'll find out. <laughs> 